Hello, and welcome to St. James Episcopal Church and the Urban Well to all of our guests, members, and visitors from near and far. We're so grateful to have you with us again during this weekend as we honor our patron saint, St. James the Apostle. As you will see, our frontal is adorned in red and we wear red stoles to commemorate St. James the Apostle, the martyr. We also invite you to continue to visit our website, www.stjameslancaster.org, to see all of the exciting activities and events that we have going on online. Tune in on Sunday mornings for our special summer series called Bible Women, which is being coordinated by Father Ron Janes. Please visit our website to sign up to receive notification for that. And although our church building is closed and we are in the process of examining ways in which we can reopen it for worship in the future, ministry has not closed. We continue to partner with organizations and collaborate with different groups on how to address the needs of those who are, in, who are impoverished or hungry or needing clothing or in need of shelter. So please reach out to us, email us, or again, connect with us on our website to find out ways in which you can help to address the needs of God's community. We also remember this weekend the sad passing of civil rights activists, Congressman John Lewis and the Reverend C.T. Vivian. Again, just commemorating the loss of some of our nation's figures and leaders in the civil rights movement, leaving a legacy of equity and advocacy and hope for a better future for our communities. Again, thank you so much for being with us. Continue to hold our rector, David Peck, and his family in your prayers for safe travels as he is away on a long overdue vacation. We will be glad to have him back, but we are also glad that he's enjoying some much needed downtime. Friends, welcome to St. James Episcopal Church and the Urban Well. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts 
by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. In honor of our patronal feast and our patron saint, St. James the Apostle, we pray together the prayer that was created in his honor. O oh, gracious God, we remember before you today your servant and Apostle James, first among the twelve to suffer martyrdom for the name of Jesus Christ. And we pray that you will pour out upon the leaders of your church that spirit of self-denying service by which alone they may have true authority among your people. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us with sighs too deep for words. And he who searches the hearts of men knows what is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that everything in God works for good with those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he predestined, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then shall we say to this? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also give us all things with him? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am sure that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, O God, my rock and my redeemer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. We've been walking with Paul to his letters to the Romans for our summer series, and out of all of his transformative and spiritually evocative writings, I believe that this particular passage from Romans on this Sunday speaks the most to his vulnerability. Out of all the words that he wrote in chapter 8 of Romans, four words that stood out to me the most and dropped deep into my spirit were these words. Too deep for words. In our Christian communities, we often come to church and or other holy places seeking answers, seeking explanations for the chaos or meaningless violence that we experience and see and hear in our world. Our communities that experience loss and grief. And here in this ancient text, written thousands of years ago, we are able to connect and identify with Paul's vulnerability in his saying that there are things in our human experiences that are simply too deep for words. God's redemptive love through Jesus' selfless act on the cross. 
I can only imagine the grieving of a mother over the loss of a son, which is simply too deep for words. Some of us are still experiencing medical and mental crisis because we are unable to manage in our restricted capacities as a result of the restrictions of COVID-19. The frustrations, the sadness, the desires to return to church buildings and the frustrations that we face, some of these things are simply too deep for words. We're able to see Paul's struggle And Paul invites us in his writings to simply rest in the fact that we can rely on the intercession of Jesus Christ our Lord and the Holy Spirit because when we are not able to find in our human language things to describe how we're feeling or what is happening in our neighborhoods, but God knows. God knows our hearts. God knows our minds and our struggles. There are things, as Paul writes, that we don't know that we need. Sometimes we don't know what it is that we desire. But God knows. That is the hope. That despite our struggles, Despite the pain that we are experiencing or the conflicts that we want to participate in helping to resolve and bringing about peace, but we don't know how, God has the answer. There is power in prayer and intercessions. On this feast weekend of the Apostle James, in which both James and Paul had a relationship. And although in a very reductive way, Paul more or less is known for his justification by faith, whereas James is saying faith without works is dead, the prayer and the hope is that all things will work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Although their ideologies and theologies converge, they overlap in some instances, they diverge in others. But one thing is for certain, there is power in community, communities of people that come together in the name of God, communities that come together to address the needs of those who are impoverished, Communities that come together to address the needs of the hungry, the destitute, the downtrodden, the brokenhearted. Communities that need to know that they are worthy of love. They are worthy of our time, and they are worthy of us to advocate on their behalf. While there are things that are too deep for words, We believe in the power of the Holy Spirit to give us utterance, to give us the things to say. And there are also times when it is okay to not have the answers. It is okay to not be able to explain all things to all people, but to rather rest, meditate in the mystery of God and in the mystery of this world. And no matter where you are in your walk, in your spiritual walk, no matter where you are in your faith or in your doubt, know this. And I leave you with these words from Paul. He says, For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers. No height, no depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love 
of God in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Go in peace, my friends, to love and serve the Lord, to love and serve one another. Know that while there are things that might be too deep for words, there is nothing too deep or too impossible for God. Amen.
we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For our presiding bishop and other ministers. For all who, who serve God in his church. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. And praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. Who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we remember those who have requested our prayers. Mike, David, Bob, Meredith, Pat, Ron, Missy, Wendy, Amy, Sherry, Matthew, Kathy, and recently departed Representative John Lewis and the Reverend C.T. Vivian. We ask for your continued prayers for all who have been named. O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercies. Look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. And may the Almighty God have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. Drawing all of our prayers into one, let us pray as our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 
May the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in the love and knowledge of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Pray.